Hi, welcome to Bald Training Lead Code Solution. If you want the best mock interview experience in North America, feel free to check us out at baldtraining.org. Uh, we're here to help you. We have uh, three rounds of mock interviews plus debriefs plus one resume re revision, and then we also have the single round one. Um, and also note we have a uh, Instagram account right now. So if you are on IG, feel free to follow us. So we'll post some notifications about our problems, some funny stuff, and also the experiences go to different offices, uh, either in Bay Area or Seattle or New York. So feel free to uh, follow us, you know, 29 followers. Congrats to those people. All right, so uh, let's do this. So today we're going to talk about this problem. It's called H index. What the heck is H index? So given the problem statement, given an array of citations, assuming you're publishing papers, uh, I remember I actually have a Google Scholar that I, uh, in my master's study, I published five papers. Anyways, each citation is a non-negative integer, which means it could be zero uh, of a researcher, write a function to compute the researcher, researcher's H index. What is H index? So a scientist has H index H. Note, we always say it's an index. Later I will, I will say it's actually not about the citation number, it's about the index about the array of how many papers you published. If H of his or her paper, N papers have at least H citations each. So that pretty much means the N minus H papers, the rest of them have no more than H citations. So rest N minus H less than H, and then the N, uh, the H papers has citations larger than H. So they basically give you examples or giving you this array not sorted. So what is the citation? So it, a, I'll put it to be uh, three because it has three papers that has more than three citations. So you have uh, uh, more or equal, equal or more than three citations. You have three, you have a six, you have five, and then five minus five, the rest of the two papers, zero and one, they have less than three citations. So they give you a bunch of hint, right? So, so um, but before I talk about hint, so if you, if you are like me, when you first read this problem, you're kind of like, oh, what, what? What is this? I actually like this guy. So this is LeetCode's official solution. Uh, I really like to read the comments area. So figure one is brilliant. It is, indeed is. And look at this guy. I wonder what this idiot question really means for. I totally agree. This kind of looks like a, you know, what's the point, right? Well, but if you think about it, even in real interviews, somebody asks you this kind of question. So what would you do? You have absolutely no idea, but you can start with the simple examples to help you understand. So the requirement is literally like you have n papers, right? n array, the array size is n, and then pretty much meet this, at least h citations each. And then um, you have h papers have at least h citations each, and then the rest less than that. So I will, come, I will normally come up with a simple example. Let's say what happens if the array only contains one element. So the citation, let's say, is 100. So what is their h index? You'll say, okay, the h index will be 1 instead of 100, because I... I I intentionally give it a little bit larger number because of what? Because you have one paper that has citations more than at least one. So 100 is definitely at least one. And then the rest of them is zero. So this, boom, checked. So at this moment, you know, oh, okay. So this index, that's why it's called H index. So it's about the index, right? So the index seems to have upper bound of the array size, which is N. And then the index could only have like limited values, literally like from zero to N. So that is one big hint. Another thing is, okay, what happens if they contain contains two elements and then we can assign some larger citation values? So here, so let's say this, this researcher have two papers. One is 1,000 citations, the other is 2,000. So the H index is actually two. Why? Because it has two papers that has more than two citations. So really it seems the H index has not much to do with the citation value itself, rather it's about the index. That's why it's called H index, not H value. Um, so at this moment, I think, like personally, at, at that time, I, I can have a brute force method. Essentially, is since H is only to be bounded by zero to n, right? And I think it says if it has multiple, if it has multiple H value, H index, the maximum one will be taken. So essentially, what I'm gonna do is I'll start. I'll have a for loop start from n to zero, going you know from the end to to the front, and then for each of the value, I will just do another loop to see. Okay, is there actually n papers? Um, is there actually uh, n papers that ha has citations like larger than this? If so, you know that would be the h index I'm looking for, or else that would be not. Um, so that basically will be O n square kind of a time complexity uh, because I'm doing like two loops. 
And naturally, whenever we solve this kind of problem, oh, okay, if we can do it in O square, what happens if I sort it? So here, the, the problem is if you sort it, it actually becomes uh, a little bit easier because this is a, that's why this is an awesome graph. If you sort it, let's say, in the descending order, so X is the basically the paper index and Y is the citations. So the problem essentially becomes you're finding this like a kind of a cut line that you can have a square because it's H and H. So the index is H and then the citation is also H. So it's like you're finding this square. And uh, whatever the square, uh, it falls. So the sum of all of those will be your H index. Um, so this actually, I will, I have a, so you can feel free to download the, the official solution here. So they actually have a solution in sorting algorithm. Essentially you sort and then you keep counting this I until you find this I that the, the citations is actually larger than the index. Then this will be the, the eight, the total sum of all those H's of those, uh, indexes are actually the citations of the H index. So the time complexity is O N of log N, um, of this method. And then finally, so how can we achieve O N? So at this moment, I think it's like, as long as you see the values are actually bucketed from zero to N, you can think about, oh, how about I use bucket sort? So at this moment, you should know how to implement bucket sort. So the tricky part is if this paper, so essentially the, the value is larger than N, doesn't matter who cares because H index is bounded by N. So that can simply count as N. So with that said, we can have the algorithm looks like, the implementation looks like this. First do some sanity check. And then you have to allocate an array the size plus one because um, you need to, the H index could be zero to the length of the citation. So that's why you need to plus one. So essentially each bucket is counting how many citations, not citi not actually citation number, but how many kind of like just uh, paper, uh, citations fall into this kind of index. So essentially what we'll do is we loop through the array. So this is my initial, the quoted part is my initial implementation. It can be translated into this one line. So let's, let's, let me explain what I first wrote. So it is like if the citation number is larger than the length, that means, oh, okay, doesn't really matter how many papers you publish. I will just count you at the, the last one or else. So this count is counting the citation numbers. Remember, um, because at this moment it falls into the array. So whatever the cite, the citation index, not the numbers, citation index, and then I will plus it by one, but I cannot simply plus by one because citation could be also be zero. So if it's a zero, if you plus just a plus plus, then it will plus by one. So you want to minus the minimum between one and the citation. So this is literally rule out for the zero case. That's it. But those four lines could be translated into one line because this is the math of the minimum of the citations and the length. So that pretty much guarded the both zero case and also the, the more than length case. Because if the more than length, it will be citations. Um, oh, sorry, it will more than length, it will be just length. And uh, uh, citations is more than length, it will be the length. If citations is, is uh, zero, And then it will be just uh, zero. It won't be uh, adding anything because zero citation doesn't make any sense. So uh, zero citation is just zero citations. It won't be one, like if I do plus plus here. So essentially this one line covers these four lines. And then after you have this counts array, so essentially what you do is you loop through the count array from, from, the, um, from the largest value to the smallest value, and then you keep a citation count. As long as this index is less than this citation count. So this is the index what we are looking for. So we will just gonna return the I and then this technically won't uh, ever actually happen because as you, as you see in this graph, it has to have at least one cut, which means it definitely will have one H index. Um, yeah, so the space complexity is ON because we use the actual array and then the time complexity is o, uh, ON because it's, uh, Bucket sort, we just loop through the array once and only once. Um, that's, that's it. Uh, yeah, let me see line 26. So I have the citation count larger than index. Which is right. So his papers, you have H papers, at least H citations. Yeah, I think that's correct. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much for watching guys. If you have any questions, feel free to leave any comments here. Bye.